So I've never given a non-Ignite talk at ICCM. So this is pretty exciting for me that I get to control my own slides today. Um, I'm going to be talking about why land matters and creating technology for land, open technology for land rights, uh, speaking about our work at the Cadasta Foundation. So first, I'm going to talk a little bit about what do I mean when I say that land matters. If you go on Twitter, you'll see this hashtag pretty, pretty frequently. It's where the land professionals gather together to talk about these sorts of issues. So the reason land matters is uh, let's all imagine being a resident of an urban informal settlement. Many of you probably better know, the, know about this as a slum. And think about if you don't have rights to where you live, what does that mean? So if you don't have formal rights to where you live, and what I mean by that is you don't know if you're going to be living there tomorrow, you don't know if you might get evicted, you, you don't have that piece of paper that says, this is where I'm allowed to live, no governmental recognition. There's a lot of problems related to this. Uh, it can be very difficult to get access to credit because you have no form of collateral. Um, you might make business decisions that are very short term. Why would you invest uh, in improving your property if you might not have it tomorrow? So that also relates to disaster uh, preparedness. Uh, you might not even have an identity. Um, so. As citizens, we talked. To, uh, Selena mentioned who's a citizen here. Uh, being recognized as someone who pays taxes or receives benefits from the government, do you have an identity card? And property can relate to that. Um, what's your address? Where do you live? So there's many different issues with this. So I'm a technologist, and maybe you're asking, how can technology fix all that? It can't. We're just a very small part of a larger group. Uh, at Cadasta, as technologists, we're just trying to improve processes. Um, we can't fix corruption. Technology can help. You can, there's many projects where you, such as Ushahidi, where you could report incidences of corruption. But until there's pressure from broader society to stop that co corruption, just having a map or another system is not going to fix it. So we all need to work together. So at Cadasta, our goal is simple, yet we think is pretty bold. Uh, we're trying to build a global ecosystem of partners, technology, and data to protect land and resource rights. We do this to support communities and citizens, allowing them to directly capture information about their land and post that on a global platform. And what I mean by a global platform is uh, a cloud-based system through the internet that you can access. The, the reason for that is to help make it transparent so you can prove that it's your land. So where do we sit? Hopefully at the middle with this platform we're working uh, to get people to use together. So we're providing colla this collaborative ecosystem, and what that means is we work a lot with partners. Cadasta doesn't go somewhere and start helping communities document their land rights. There's 12 of us. We'd be on an airplane all the time. What we look for is local partners who have been working somewhere for a long time, who maybe are not that well reversed in technology, but we can help them get started. We also look for existing community data and existing tools. Uh, if you look, uh, Cadasta's on GitHub, and if you look there, you'll see that there's a lot of technology that we are repurposing. We don't mean to invent it all. And then the fourth component is the Cadasta platform, where it all comes together. So there's this idea of the land rights continuum. And what that means is, imagine that, that resident of the informal settlement having zero rights 
legal recognition to where they live, to all the way to having a title. Uh, so where I live in the United States, you don't really question that you have the rights to where you live most of the time. Um, I do not own my apartment, but I have a lease, and the owner has a title to that apartment, uh, to, to that property. And so that's over to the tip of the arrow. So we're trying to help move people along this. We don't aim to go from zero to 100, maybe 30% is enough to help someone have more security. Uh, and there's different aspects along the way. Um, so one item is we talk a lot about customary rights. So maybe a community has rights to the area where li they're living in versus an individual. Maybe they're unlikely to get evicted. Maybe they have a lease, maybe it's registered, maybe they all the way to having that title. We're just trying to move along the arrow. So I mentioned open a little bit. We very strongly believe in open, and there's different components to that. As I mentioned, our software, you can go look at it on GitHub. Our software is completely free and open. Everything we do is built under an open license. We also contribute to existing projects as well. But the other side of it, open data. I'm a huge fan of open data. Um, I've been working on open data projects probably for about 10 years now. But open data is not always the responsible thing to do. So both security and privacy are important. It's up to communities to determine if, it, if they, their data should be open. And it's up to us to help educate them on that. For example, I was working in Indonesia at one point uh, on a community mapping project, and, we were discuss and people were putting all sorts of private information into OpenStreetMap. And we were discussing with them, maybe you don't need, shouldn't be putting the type of contraception people use, how much they earn, whether or not they receive government assistance into the open. And the response in talking through the NGO we worked with with the village, they said, oh, well, we don't care if the world knows that. We just don't want the village next door to know because, well, they don't have internet access, so they can't go and look. So it's important to have these discussions because uh, people can have different perceptions. At the moment, most of our partners are not mapping data in the open because they're doing things like doing uh, assessments of the likelihood of eviction. Maybe that is a very strong, strong data you can advocate for, but maybe it's not great to put out there completely openly for everyone to use. If you go to cadasta.org, um, in our resources section, we've written about the risks and opportunities of open data in land. So this is the toned down version of the Cadasta solution stack. So we have allow many different types of inputs from computers to drones, to traditional surveying equipment, to paper maps. Uh, we work with implementing partners, as I mentioned, those NGOs that are already active in places, and also, and through them with beneficiaries. And we provide a, a secure, um, stable place that they can store that data in the Cadasta platform. We also believe in contributing to what works. One example of this is field papers. Field papers is if you go to fieldpapers.org, it's a website that allows you to print a map. You can write on it, then take a picture of it with your mobile phone and upload it. Um, and it has special markings and a QR code on it that allows it to be automatically geo-referenced. And what that means is it, you magically, from that picture, take your paper map and it has a, it's geospatially placed on the earth. And what this allows is you're using high-tech paper, but having a conversation with communities on paper is a lot more effective than trying to do it on a small mobile phone and something that's a lot better understood. We also, also extensively use Open Data Kit and GeoODK, um, which are offline mobile data collection platforms that are widely used around the world. I know that Open Data Kit has um, mul close to half a million downloads in the Google Play Store. So how is this relevant to crisis mapping? 
because we don't really talk about land issues often in crisis mapping. We talk about conflict, but what's causing those conflicts? By having this information, it allows better planning, reduced conflict. Uh, people contribute more money um, to building their property, so it might be more resilient. It might survive a typhoon. Better access to insurance, contribution to identification and records can potentially help stop land grabs and other types of fraud. So if any of this sounds interesting to you, I definitely would like to talk more. Also, if you go to demo.cadasta.org, you can get a walkthrough of our platform. I encourage you to sign up. You don't have to talk to me to get started, but since I'm here, I'd love to talk to all of you. And I hope this sounds exciting. Thank you.